Good evening. At this time, I'd like to welcome everyone to the Town of Lexington Council meeting. This meeting is being held at Town Hall Monday evening, March 2nd, 2020. This meeting is being broadcast live and will be replayed several times over the next week on the Town's Cable Information Channel 1301 and will also be available for viewing on the Town's website. I'm Steve McDougal. I'm the Mayor of the Town of Lexington. At this time, I'd like to introduce to you my fellow Council members. To my left is Mayor Pro Tem Hazel Livingston. Good evening. To her left is Council Member Todd Carnes. Good evening. To his left is Council Member Steve Baker. Good evening. To my right is Council Member Kathy Manis. Good evening. To her right is Council Member Ron Williams. Good evening. At this time, I would like to ask Mr. Bill Shanahan if you would not mind, since you're here with us tonight, if you would offer invocation for tonight's meeting. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Bow your heads, please. Lord, thank you for this opportunity to be at the town of Lexington's council meeting. Thank you for all the many blessings on the citizens of this wonderful town that you created. Let your will be done tonight in tonight's meeting. Let us be reminded that you created us to glorify you. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. 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 At this time, Xavier, since you are here with us tonight on a special occasion, if you would lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance, if everyone would please stand. Good, I threw you under the hot seat there. You did very well, thank you. At this time, I will call the meeting to order. We will report on our executive session this evening. In tonight's executive session, we had two legal issues, one issue regarding pending litigation, and one issue was advice regarding agenda items. We had two contractual issues. One was an issue regarding downtown development, and the other issue was regarding a sewer contract. No vote was taken in executive session other than to vote to adjourn executive session. Is there a motion to ratify the mayor's executive session report? So moved. Ms. Livingston makes a motion. Is there a second? Second. Mr. Carnes, seconds the motion. All those in favor, please raise your right hand. That is unanimous. Deletions on the agenda. Are there <clears throat> any deletions of any of the items on tonight's agenda? There are no deletions, but we do need to move two items. We are going to move one of the proclamations. Miss Kathy Manis is going to read the census proclamation for Mr. Todd Lyle. He is not with us tonight. And Mr. Carnes is going to read item number one of new business when it comes up. Anything else? Very good. We will move right into approval of minutes. Copies of the minutes from the council work session on February 18, 2020 were provided to you in your packets. Are there any omissions, additions, or corrections to work session February 18, 2020? Hearing none, is there a motion to approve those minutes? So moved. Mr. Williams makes a motion. Ms. Main is seconds. Motion. All those in favor, please raise your right hand. That is unanimous. At this time, we'll move right into presentations. Our first presentation this evening is from Council Member Todd Carnes. Council Member Carnes. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. We're going to do a uh, presentation tonight for uh, Lexington's probably newest Eagle Scout, uh, Xavier Gonzalez. And so I'm going to ask you, Xavier, if you would go stand right there at that podium, bring your family with you. Uh, if I get the entire family up there so we can get you guys on camera. And we've got a... Uh, letter of commendation that we want to provide to you tonight so uh, let me read this for you guys on behalf of the town of Lexington it is my privilege to honor you on receiving the highest advancement rank of Eagle Scout we're very proud of you and your accomplishments and dedication to the Boy Scouts of America there's a long list of fine American leaders that also achieved the Eagle Scout ranking during their youth many succeeded in careers that continued to be influenced by the training they received as scouts. 
you too will have many opportunities open to you because of your commitment and your desire to overcome obstacles. Your project to distribute foster care bags to foster children in Lexington was very admirable. You certainly made a difference in your community by assembling 122 duffel bags with gender specific items included for DSS to have when they need to remove a child. As we know, the children sometimes have to leave in a hurry and do not have many personal hygiene items. Plus, it gives them a real duffel bag to use instead of a trash bag. You've demonstrated that today's youth believe in character, honesty, and integrity. All these characteristics are critical for all of us to succeed in making our communities and our world a better place. Xavier, as you embark on your future, no matter where your path leads, we want you to know that you have our support and, will always, and we will always be available to you. So as a token of our appreciation for your hard work, I would like to present to you on behalf of the mayor and the council, a gold lapel pin with the town of Lexington seal. Keep this as a reminder that no matter where your success takes you, you can always remember your strong roots run deep in this community and that we are very proud of you. Congratulations, Xavier. And I'm going to come bring you this letter and this pen, but before I do, I wanted to give you a chance to say something if you would like to uh, say something to us all here. Thank you very much for your appreciation. I'm very grateful to have to have had the opportunity to give back to my community with my Eagle Project, and thank you for this honor. Nice job. Well thank done. You. Well done. And I want to say before these guys get out of here, they happen to live in my neighborhood, and they're very active in our neighborhood and our community. Great, great citizens, and we're proud to have you guys in Lexington. Thank y'all for being with us tonight. Congratulations. Our next presentation this evening is from Council Member Kathy Manis. This is a proclamation of Census Day, April 1st, 2020. Council Member Manis. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Whereas Article 1, Section 2 of the United States Constitution mandates that a census stating Representatives and direct taxes shall be apportioned among the states according to their respective numbers, with the next census to be held on April the 1st, 2020. Whereas the 2020 census will address every household in the nation with a simple questionnaire with the goal of counting everyone only once and in the right place, which must include the children who, are under count, who were undercounted in the 2010 census by 1 million in the United States for ages 5 and under. Whereas the town of Lexington formed a complete count committee in January of 2019 with the town's advisory committee who with their knowledge, influence, and resources are key to educate the community through outreach activities to increase awareness and participation in the 2020 census in order to avoid undercounting in areas which have historically been hard to count and could create a decade worth of issues for federal program funding for South Carolina, such as Medicaid for Children and others. Whereas data collected from the 2020 census drives important decisions for government and the public, including apportionment of legislators, drawing district lines, distribution of $675 billion in federal funding to states and communities, of which South Carolina receives approximately $7.3 billion in census allocated funds for transportation, education, health care, economic development, community services, fair housing, public safety, emergency preparedness, and other, rev and other revenues to municipalities. Whereas businesses use census statistics to decide where to build or expand, and developers use census statistics to determine where to build new homes, 
and where to revitalize older neighborhoods, all of which create jobs and improves the quality of life. Whereas personal census data is protected by the federal government and by law cannot be shared with law enforcement agencies, immigration enforcement agencies, or used to determine one's ability for government benefits, and in fact, census work workers are sworn to a lifetime of secrecy and can face up to five years in prison and a $250,000 fine for disclosing personal information. Individual records from the census are confidential for 72 years. They're still waiting on the release of the 1950 census information, which will not be released for two more years. Whereas the first 2020 census mailers or self-response invitations will go out mid-March, and the citizens are encouraged to respond to the census by phone, mail, or for the first time ever, online, which will eliminate the need and expense to have a census worker knock on their door starting in mid-May. Whereas the town of Lexington has experienced a high rate of growth since the 2010 census, which makes it even more important to have each citizen respond correctly and promptly to the census invitation, as it is of utmost importance for the benefit and opportunities for our citizens, plus it's our civic duty. Duty. Now, therefore, be it proclaimed by the Mayor and Council of Lexington, South Carolina, that the upcoming date of April the 1st, 2020, be declared Census Day in the town of Lexington, and for all to recognize the importance of the 2020 Census and to pledge full support to the U.S. Census Bureau in order to achieve a complete and accurate census count and to ensure that South Carolina receives its fair share of federal resources and funding. Signed the second day of March, 2020, Steve McDougall, Mayor. Very good, thank you, Kathy. I think we're gonna let Lauren take that and show that to the advisory committee who worked so hard on that. Thank you, Lauren. Our next presentation this evening is from Mr. John Klinger and Mr. Bill Shanahan, if you'd like to come forward. <coughs> this is a presentation of the Lexington County Chili Cook-Off Mr. John Klinger is from the Old Mill Brew Pub, and Mr. Bill Shanahan and his wife are from the Lexington County Bluefish. This is to the Lexington Police Department Foundation. Chief, if you'd like to come forward. Thank you, Mr. Mayor and Council. On behalf of Vicki and I and John and Kelly Klinger, this was uh, the best thing that ever came out of Pennsylvania was John and Kelly Klinger <laughs> moving to Lexington. I agree and it was that. his vision to, uh, to create our own chili cook-off. And the first year we did it, we did it out at the ballpark. And then you all did something wonderful. You built an amphitheater. Mm -hmm. And we moved it, and uh, it just continues to grow out there. And uh, big kudos to all of you. And also, I want to acknowledge Walker Brewer has done an amazing job for you out there. So uh, I don't know when the raises come in uh, fiscal <laughs> year, but I would definitely want to take care of him. But John, I'm going to hand it over to John and uh, to present the check to our great police chief. Well, this is a far cry from that $7.1 billion hopefully South Carolina will get, but it's something left over for, from proceeds from the sales, uh, all the sales from the food, the chili receipts, beer, um, and freeway music through in a little. So something we can give back to the community. Obviously, there's two recipients this year, but we, of course, love our chief of police here. That is fantastic. Oh, awesome. wow. we're, we're in the in the progress of uh, we we got a board. Uh, Lori's uh, one of our vice chair, but we're uh, in the prog uh, progress of buying vests for our canine units, and they're very expensive. So this, where that money will go to, to protect them when they got to go in homes, to protect us. So if we could get a picture. 
Thank Absolutely. You. Y'all come forward. Let's get a quick picture. And let us add that the town of Lexington Police won the People's Choice Award. Uh, there was a fix in, but that's okay. Congratulations, Lori. Thank, thank you so Sunday. much. Lori, thank you so much for your involvement in this as well. You're a great community partner, and we really appreciate what you do in our community. She's been thank doing you. it for a long time. We appreciate her. Yes. Very good. So, Chief, who fixed the chili for the police station? Very good. <laughs> Thank you. Mr. Shanahan, I think you have another one you'd like to present. Thank you. Yeah, it's been uh, a lot of fun. Uh, we uh, not only were honored to be a part of the chili cook-off to continue here, but we are. Uh, we put on the mayor's prayer breakfast at Lexington County Baseball Stadium every year. We've just finished our... Our third, Jonathan Johnson, shared his testimony. Uh, Jonathan was a former major league pitcher and uh, now at Columbia International University. And, you know, it's, uh, it's a great way for citizens of Lexington to get together and just pray for our community. And that's what, uh, that's what we do. And, Mayor, I thank you. You know, the Mayor literally gets up in the morning and cooks the breakfast and brings it. So uh, it's, it's a wonderful morning of uh, fellowship. And this year, we're really thankful that um, we're able to provide a donation to Linda Brown with the Levee Pregnancy Care Center. And Mayor, will you come up here and yeah, I'd be happy to uh, present the check to uh, Linda? What great work she's doing! <laughs> You're welcome. You're welcome. Yes, absolutely. Come on, hugs are free. Come on. Let's get a picture. Come on. Okay. In Lexington now uh, this is our sixth season but uh, sixth year and uh, that first year Lexington didn't have the St. Patrick's Parade so we decided to start one and really our goal all along was to just make it a family fun free event like all the under wonderful events that are going on in Lexington I, I, I gotta tell you I've been around a lot of parades and events and there's nothing like your snowball parade uh, we can be proud of the success and the crowds that come out uh, to, to be a part of that. And so the Shamrock Parade is just growing. It's just starting, okay? We're in our fifth year. And I do want to let you know that we are the only Shamrock Parade in the United States of America. Wow. Everyone wow. else is St. Patrick's. Yeah. <laughs> no, but we're going to promote the Shamrock because that's what Patrick did when he went to Ireland as a missionary. Patrick went there to share the word by using the three-leaf clover shamrock to teach the Holy Trinity, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. So here we are in the town of Lexington, and who's getting all the credit? It's the Lord. So let me just pass on to all of you a poster uh, for our next, it's about a week and a half away, and we want everyone to be a part of this. And please, take this poster and take it to a business that doesn't have it in there, and let everybody know we've got another great event for families right here in the town of Lexington. Very good. 
Well, we can't thank you and Vicky enough for everything y'all do in the town. You've been, uh, we talked about community partners just a minute ago, but y'all have been an outstanding community partner. We're sad that you're not on Main Street anymore, um, but we want you to know that uh, anything that we do here in and around town, you're always welcome. Uh, you, the door is always open for you and Blowy to always show up. And and uh, I've been a lot, around a lot of promoters in my life. You're one of the best I've ever seen. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. Thank you all. Thank you. Thank yeah. you guys. Thank, Thank you so you. much. At this time, I will give a vision plan update for our March meeting. The 2020 Municipal Achievement Award was handed out this year for populations from 10 to 20,000. And guess who won? The town of Lexington. We are the winner of the 2020 Municipal Achievement Award for our adaptive signalization system and preemption project. The Achievement Awards program has three main objectives. One is to recognize innovative projects, to share those projects with other municipalities, and to demonstrate the value of cities and towns. The entry was judged on innovation, efficient use of resources, the role of the city's overall vision, effective use of partnerships, quantifiable results and adaptability to other hometowns. The award again was a 10 to 20,000 population category will be officially presented to the town of Lexington this summer at our meeting with the municipal association down in Charleston. We're very, very excited about that. That is the link of lights that we added on and from where our adaptive ended all the way down to the city of Columbia that runs through the city of West Columbia. We had a great partnership with the city of West Columbia, the Lexington Hospital, and DOT uh, aligning all those lights. So right now we control the lights from Jim Hudson Ford to the last light before you get into the city of Columbia. So if we had a natural disaster or something we needed to create a green light tunnel, we could absolutely create that green light tunnel and get people to safety very quickly but feel very good about the results that we're having with those lights, especially around the hospital and allowing those emergency vehicle, vehicles to come and go as they needed to uh, freely through that area. So very excited about that achievement award uh, and, and what a great job Lauren Barnes did in uh, presenting that award to the Municipal Association and writing it in a way that I think won the award for us. So good job, Lauren. Our next uh, update is we have an, we're asking for an RFP coming up next month. So if you have an idea for something on Main Street, uh, be on the lookout for an exciting development opportunity that will be announced very soon. So we have a piece of property that's located right next door to Aladia's on Main Street. We are asking for requests for proposals and ideas from developers to open that lot on West Main Street. So if you're interested in that, look out for that RFP coming out next month. The Ice House Amphitheater update. Tomorrow, the pavilion project at the Ice House Amphitheater bid will open at two o'clock. Once awarded, construction is expected to begin soon after that. The goal for the pavilion is to be completed by this year. In addition to the pavilion, there will be additional women's restrooms and air conditioning. I know all of y'all are <laughs> excited about that. Added to the current facilities. This weekend, there are two events at the amphitheater. So please visit the amphitheater's Facebook page for all those details. Each month, I announce what's going on in and around Lexington, all of the results of the vision plan that we created in 2012. We actually reviewed it and updated it last summer. You can read the entire vision plan on the town's webpage. Please share your thoughts with us if you have any ideas that will help improve the quality of life for our community. That is the vision plan update for March 2020. At this time, I will ask Mayor Pro Tem for a traffic update. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. The SCDOT has begun patchwork along South Lake Drive between Fort Street and Gibson Road as part of a surface rehabilitation plan. Please be aware of lane closures, lane shifts, 
and use extra caution in and around this area for the next several weeks. Along Columbia Avenue, 378 between Reed Avenue and Old Chapin Road, the development of Andy's Car Wash has begun. This work requires some intermittent lane shifts and possible closures as construction of a raised median is completed. Work continues on the deceleration lane at the new Hampton Inn being constructed along Sunset Boulevard, 378. Please use caution as periodic lane shifts will be used during this construction. And the next traffic committee meeting will be held on Wednesday, March the 11th at 8 a.m. in the third floor conference room of Town Hall. Also, if you're aware of any traffic issues in the town, please contact 358-7273. Very good. Thank you, Mayor Pro Tem. At this time, we'll move into public hearing. Speakers are limited to five minutes. Our first public hearing this evening is final reading of an ordinance to authorize issuance of general obligation bonds and bond anticipation notes for 2020. Anyone here wish to speak to that? Very good. Our second item, final reading of an ordinance to amend the Ice House Tax Increment Financing Ordinance. Anyone here wish to speak to that? Hearing none, our final reading this evening is final reading of an ordinance rezoning Lexington County Tax Map number 4300-04-167 and 4300-01-076 and a portion of 4300-01-064 located off of Kaufman Farm Lane. Anyone here wish to speak to that? Hearing none, that concludes our public hearings for this evening. We will move right into old business. Our first item of old business is from Council Member Kathy Manis. Final reading of an ordinance annexing Lexington County Tax Map number 4323-05-011 located on 702 West Main Street. Council Member Kathy Manis. Thank you, Mr. Mayor and Council. Marshall Davis owns 0.69 acres located at 702 West Main Street and has petitioned to annex the property. A custom home builder is planning to construct a model home sales office on the site. Properties in the town near this one are zoned general commercial and West Main Street is classified as an arterial road. The Planning Commission reviewed this annexation in July of 2019 and recommended office commercial zoning for the property and arterial road classification for West Main Street. A public hearing was held on January the 6th, 2020. During Council's January the 6th, 2020 meeting, a motion carried to table the item for one month and hold the utility service for one month and make a final decision at the next Council member meeting to allow the developer time to address the connectivity issues. At the February 3rd, 2020 meeting, Council tabled the item for an additional month. A site plan was received from the developer's attorney with a note that the developer and the church had agreed on the attached site plan. I make a motion for final reading approval of an ordinance annexing Lexington County Tax Map number 4323-05-011 located at 702 West Main Street as General Commercial. Councilmember Manis makes a motion. Do I have a second? Second. Councilmember Williams seconds the motion. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor, please raise your right hand. That is unanimous. Our next item of old business is from Councilmember Todd Carnes. Final reading of an ordinance to authorize issuance of general obligation bonds and bond anticipation notes of 2020. Councilmember Carnes. <clears throat> Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Scrolling, scrolling. Here we go. All right. <clears throat> the town's general government capital improvements plan for fiscal years 2020 through 2024 totals approximately $13.4 million. The financing plan provides for construction or construction period project costs to be initially financed by bond anticipation notes or bands. Permanent long-term financing will ultimately be accomplished with a mix of general obligation bonds and revenue bonds supported by impact fee and hospitality tax revenues. In order to issue general obligation bonds and related bans, the town must adopt an ordinance providing for the issuance of the bonds and bans. 
To provide maximum flexibility, the ordinance will provide for authorization of up to $8 million. Mr. Mayor, I make a motion for final reading, approval of an ordinance to authorize issuance of general obligation bonds and bond anticipation notes of 2020. Councilmember Collins makes a motion. Do I have a second? Second. Councilmember Baker seconds that motion. Any further discussion? <coughs> Hearing none, all those in favor, please raise your right hand. That is unanimous. Our next item of old business is from Councilmember Ron Williams, final reading of an ordinance to amend the Ice House Tax Increment Financing Ordinance. Councilmember Ron Williams. Thank you, Mayor and Council. The Ice House, Ice House TIF bond ordinance needs to be updated and amended to address issuance of additional rollover refunding of bands. Due to the flood of 2015, uh, the Old Mill Trail project has not been completed. The trail is one of the redevelopment projects in the Ice House redevelopment plan, which needs to be completed prior to issuance of long-term TIF financing. Project delay has resulted in band rollover refundings beyond the time provided in the original ordinance. Additionally, other tax law related modifications are needed to ensure compliance with all IRS regulations governing these types of financing. I'd like to make a um, final reading of an ordinance to amend uh, the Ice House Tax Increment Finance Ordinance as a motion. Mr. Williams makes a motion. Is there a second? <coughs> I'll second it. Ms. Maynard seconds the motion. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor, please raise your right hand. That is unanimous. Our next item of old business is from Council Member Steve Baker, final reading of an ordinance rezoning Lexington County Tax Map number 4300-04-167, 4300-01-076, and a portion of 4300-01-064 located off of Kaufman Farm Lane. Council Member Steve Baker. Thank you, Mr. Mayor and Council. Springdale Development has requested to rezone property located at 191 Kaufman Farm Lane from General Commercial and Limited Commercial to Protected Residential 2. The request is being made to facilitate the development of an 81-unit subdivision. Properties adjacent to this one are zoned General Commercial and Protected Residential. The Planning Commission reviewed this request during their January meeting and recommended approval of the rezoning. I make a motion for final reading approval. Councilmember Baker makes a motion. Do I have a second? Second. Councilmember Corrin seconds that motion. <laughs> Any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor, please raise your right hand. That is unanimous. At this time, we'll move right into new business. Our first item of new business is from Councilwoman Kathy Manis. First reading of an ordinance. Annexing Lexington County Tax Map number 3500-03-014, located at 4532 Darby Ambrose Road. I said Councilmember Manus, but this is for Councilmember Todd Carnes. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. <clears throat> Kenneth Schuler owns one acre, located at 4532 Darby Ambrose Road, and has petitioned to annex the property. The property is currently undeveloped. Properties in town near this one are zoned general commercial and limited commercial. Darby Ambrose Road is classified as a limited local road. The Planning Commission reviewed this annexation during their February meeting and recommended limited commercial zoning and limited local road classification for this parcel. Mr. Mayor, I make a motion for first reading approval. Councilmember Carnes makes a motion. Is there a second? Second. Councilmember Baker seconds that motion. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor, please raise your right hand. That is unanimous. Our next item of new business is from Councilmember Kathy Manis, resolution in support of the National League of Cities agenda for the 2020 presidential election. Councilmember Kathy Manis. Thank you, Mr. Mayor and Council. Um, I have had the honor of serving on this task force that did this, so I'm happy to bring tonight that the National League of Cities has asked local leaders to introduce and adopt the 2020 cities agenda as an official mark of support for leading together to secure America's brighter future. So I make a motion that we adopt the resolution. Very good, Ms. Manis makes a motion. Is there a second? Second. Council Member Corrin seconds the motion. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor, please raise your right hand. 
That is unanimous. Our next item of doing business would be from Mayor Pro Tem. She had to step out. She's not feeling well. This is going to be a market at Ice House policy update. Ms. Maness agreed to read that as well. Ms. Maness. Thank you, Mr. Mayor and Council. At the February 18th, 2020 work session, Council discussed modifications to the policy for the, ice, for the market at Ice House. The updated policy is attached. I make a motion for Council approval. Ms. Maness makes a motion. Is there a second? Second. Mr. Williams seconds the motion. Any further discussion? Mr. Mayor. Yes, sir. Mr. Baker. Can we just get a brief update on what those changes were, just for the record? Yes, sir. <clears throat> Mr. Walker Brewer is here. Seems like he's handing out $20 bills because Bill Shanahan was giving him high praise. <laughs> 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 I wish. <laughs> um, no, the policy update um, simply clarified some of the registration requirements, um, specifically around booth for a cause. It also added a deposit uh, that will be required from the vendors um, to participate um, and just cleaned up some of the language in the policy. Thank you. Very good, Walker. Thank you. And we do all agree you're doing a fantastic job there. Can, Walker, can you explain the, um, the deposit to me, please, for uh, the, the vendors? The deposit will work very similar to how we do with our rental deposits. Um, pretty much if the vendors show up when they say they're going to show up, obey the rules, and behave, they get their $75 deposit back. So for the people who are doing the um, farmer's market, yes, they pay $75 every Saturday? No, ma'am. It would be a one deposit for the The whole season. season. Okay. Now, if something happens and that deposit would be withheld, they would have to make another deposit in order to be able to re-enter into the market. But one deposit would work for the whole season. And that's real clear in here, right? Uh, that's the way I understood it when I wrote it. <laughs> yeah, it was a rolling. Rolling okay. deposit, yeah. yeah. Okay. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. Very good. Thank you. We have a motion and a second. All those in favor, please raise your right hand. That is unanimous. Our next item of new business is from Councilmember Todd Carnes, building permit fee waiver. Councilmember Carnes. <clears throat> Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Habitat for Humanity is planning to construct several homes in the town of Lexington. The estimated construction value of each of these homes is $70,000, which creates a Building permit cost of $512.15 for each home. Council has been asked to waive the permit fees for all of the Habitat for Humanity homes to be constructed in order to support the organization's mission of helping families build places to call home. Mr. Mayor, I make a motion for approval of waiver of these permit fees. Councilmember Collins makes a motion. Is there a second? Second. Councilmember Williams seconds the motion. Any further discussion? Mr. Mayor, may I? Yes, sir, Mr. Carnes. <clears throat> just real quick, while we've got everybody's attention, just want to call everybody's attention to this. I don't know if I have the numbers exactly right, but I'm pretty sure Habitat's planning on building 10 new homes and doing uh, upfit and rehab to multiple more, kind of in the downtown Lexington area. And so churches, civic groups, friend groups, all groups, if you're uh, interested in putting your hands to a hammer on a Saturday, a Sunday, formulating a group and making our community better, I really encourage you to reach out to Habitat for Humanity and be, be a part of this process that's going to be a great blessing to a lot of people in our community. And I want to give a shout out to uh, some of the people that have already got on board with uh, some of our local churches. Appreciate everything everybody's doing. Very good. Thank you, Mr. Carnes. Anyone else? We have a motion and a second. All those in favor, please raise your right hand. That is unanimous. Our next item of business is from Council Member Steve Baker, Boards and Commissions Council Liaisons. Council Member Baker. Thank you, Mr. Mayor and Council. During Council's February 18, 2020 work session, Council discussed several options concerning Council Liaisons. A motion was made to discontinue the practice of assigning council liaisons since all meetings are open to the public and can be attended by any or all council members and to continue staff liaisons to eight boards with the exception of Central Midlands COG and the Joint Municipal Water and Sewer Commission and to include the directive that each council member be supplied with an email summary of each meeting so they can all relate to the boards all to be effective at the time of the vote. If proved, staff liaisons are 
to provide council a summary in bullet point format of the board or commission meetings that they attend. I make a motion for council approval. Mr. Baker makes a motion. Is there a second? Second. Mr. Williams seconds the motion. Any further discussion? Yes, sir, Mr. Mayor. Yes, sir, Mr. Carnes. Am I reading that right? I think there's a continue there where it's supposed to be discontinue. Is that right? Motion was made to discontinue the practice of a discontinuing staff liaisons to eight boards, with the exception of Central Midlands Cog and Joint Municipal Water and Sewer. The staff, the staff instead of council. Staff liaisons. Excuse me. Thank you. Another point of clarification. Yes, sir, Mr. Poole. Um, Mr. Mayor, it was my understanding, but not the way the motion was read, that that um, requirement to report out would be for boards and commi commissions that don't produce the minutes. Correct. Is, is that changed or is that correct? No, that is correct. Point of order, that's not what the motion was. That Mr. Baker made the motion and I seconded it. Yes, sir. Mr. Baker, would you like to uh, restate your... I actually... <laughs> I actually stated it how I meant it to. I, I've enjoyed getting the, uh, the kind of bullet points from the different folks um, since we've asked for that from our staff and actually read it how I meant to. Council a summary in bullet point format of the board of commissions meeting that do not currently produce minutes. Okay. So it would just be the bullet points and the minutes instead of one or the other. We get the bullet point. Basically, what your motion was supposed to get bullet points from a staff person that attended the meeting. Correct. After the meeting was over. Correct. And then we would get minutes like we normally do. Correct. All right. Very good. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor, please raise your right hand. Those opposed? Very good. At this time, we will hear announcements from Ron Williams. American Legion welcomed Nicole Clapp to Lexington today by re re reading a proclamation from the mayor and council to honor her. Ms. Clapp is the American Legion Auxiliary National President from Iowa, and she will be visiting South Carolina for a few days. Uh, we'd like to welcome uh, President Clapp here to town. This will be another busy spring at the Ice House Amphitheater. The Lexington Live Free Spring Concert Series runs for seven weeks this year, starting with the Finesse Band on April 9th. Please visit icehouseamphitheater.com for a complete list and also like their page on Facebook. Uh, other upcoming events at the Ice House Amphitheater include the movie Playing With Fire will be showing this Friday, March the 6th at 6.30. And it's free. Uh, Pack the Pantry is this Saturday at 1 p.m. with live bands and benefit the and it benefits uh, Mission Lexington. Uh, please remember to bring a canned good for admission. The Eagles Tribute Band on the Border is sold out. Uh, Mr. Brewer did an excellent job on selling that pretty quick, I understand. Uh, but there's still time to get tickets for Sister Hazel, which is on June the 12th at 6 p.m. for $28. Board of Zoning Appeals will meet this Thursday at 5.30 here in Council Chambers. Uh, don't forget this weekend to spring forward uh, with your clocks as we adjust for daylight savings time. The advisory board will meet on March the 10th at 6 in the Eli Mack Room. The traffic committee will meet on March the 11th at 8 a.m. in the third floor conference room. The St. Patrick's Shamrock Parade will be on Main Street in Lexington on Saturday, March the 14th at 2. Council will meet again on March 16th at 6 for Council's work session downstairs in the Eli Mack room. The Planning Commission will meet on March 18th at 8 a.m. here in the Council Chambers. Uh, thank you for watching your Town Council in Action tonight. Very good. Anyone else have any other announcements they'd like to make? Mr. Mayor? Yes. I would like to wish Council Member Ron Williams a happy birthday on this Friday. So happy thank birthday. You, Very good. Anyone else? I would like to uh, send out condolences to uh, the family of Bobby Bowers. He passed away uh, yesterday unexpectedly. I'm sorry, the day before unexpectedly. He was uh, in the hospital, passed away. He was a great Lexingtonian, been here as long as I've been here. Uh, he was a, just a great guy to be around. He was a part of the Lions Club, uh, always involved in things that were happening in and around town. 
I had a staff member tell me earlier they worked with him on several occasions. And he was very, very helpful in everything that he did. Uh, we are going to miss him. He's a wonderful guy. So uh, condolences to the family, and we're thinking and praying for you. Mr. Mayor, he yes. was very instrumental in drawing the lines for our state government and redistricting, and I know the House and Senate's getting ready to do that again, and he will definitely be missed there. Definitely be missed. Anyone else? Are there any one? Is there anyone in the public regarding tonight's agenda that would like to add anything? Very good. That concludes our business for this evening. Thank you for watching the town council meeting for the town of Lexington. This meeting was held at Town Hall Monday evening, March second, two thousand and twenty. A recording of this meeting will be aired on the town's information cable channel one three zero one several times during the week. This week, and the video will be available on the town's webpage at lexsc.com. Without objection, we are adjourned.